Somebody was saying that they didn't want to do it. Excuse me, sir. Is that working? Is it not on?
is. I don't know if those of you were checking the weather report last Wednesday. 90% chance of rain this morning. So we've beaten the odds. Uh, I'm going to uh, reserve some of my uh, welcoming remarks for the end of the ceremony uh, for reasons that will become obvious at that point. But uh, right now I'd like to uh, just remind our graduates that, that uh, this is supposed to be an enjoyable event and you can relax and uh, uh, recognize the fact that your family's here to support you and that even though it's a formal ceremony, uh, we should enjoy it. Uh, with that, uh, cell phones, please uh, turn them off and uh, we will begin uh, by asking people to rise for an invocation by David Lake. Good morning. Good morning. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we thank you for rain and sunny weather, and we thank you for this glorious day. Thank you for the gifts of being able to see it, hear it, smell it, think about it, and enjoy it. Thank you for the gifts you have given to each of our graduates whose accomplishments we honored this morning. We thank you for the many blessings in our lives, including delivering all here safely today. We ask you to bless those who cannot be with us on earth and in heaven as we keep them in our hearts. Thank you for our many blessings, and when we forget we are blessed, please remind us. We come here today filled with joy. Joy for the day, joy for the people here to share it, joy for things accomplished, and a joy-filled hope for a very bright future. You've blessed parents with these children. Thank you for the trust you've placed in parents to always try to do the best for their children and for the guidance you have given to them when they have asked for it. We thank you for blessing us with the children of these parents and for entrusting the school to try and do the best for these graduates and other children. And we thank you for the guidance you have given us when we have asked for it. We thank you for our faculty and staff to whom we have entrusted these and other children, and thank you for giving them the wisdom and caring hearts to educate each child and for the guidance you have given them when they have asked for it. Soon we will all entrust others to guide them through the next stages of their lives. We ask that they too do their best to care for, lead, and counsel them. And we ask that the students getting ready to graduate all be inspired to lead lives that make a difference in the lives of others. Amen. Good morning. Everybody can sit down. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, welcome everyone to the 54th commencement of North Cross School. I'm Russ Ellett and I serve as the chair of the Board of Trustees. It is an honor to lead the board of an institution that produces such outstanding graduates and has such a wonderful faculty and staff. There has never been a better time to be at North Cross. Our academic program is outstanding. Prestigious universities and colleges our graduates attend are proof of this. 35 juniors and seniors were AP scholars this year. And the richness of the North Cross experience extends well beyond the classroom. For example, this year, 42 students participated in the Model United Nations at the University of Pennsylvania and Harvard. Four students were inducted into the Thespian Hall of Fame. And four students spent their spring break at North Cross Xinha in Shanghai. Our athletic teams always excel, and they did so again this year, bringing home seven conference championships and one state championship. Operationally and financially, North Cross is on solid footing. We continue to run operating surpluses and to pay down debt. Earlier this year, North Cross was reaccredited by the Virginia Association of Independent Schools. The VAIS's reaccreditation team was scheduled to have a three-day on-campus visit. 
The visit went so well that they completed their work in two days. They were extremely impressed with the quality of our faculty, curriculum, and students. Thank you to the faculty and staff for all your hard work this year. You made the 2016-17 school year outstanding in all regards. Thank you also, North Cross parents, grandparents, and friends for all you do, financially and otherwise, for the school. Without your support, this day would not be possible. And thank you to the Board of Trustees for your tireless work and devotion to the school. I want to specifically recognize the three members who are rotating off the board this year, who have all served on the Executive Committee and have spent countless hours serving, serving the school. George Vogel, who chaired the Buildings and Grounds Committee, Ian McDade, who chaired the Audit Committee, and George Cartledge III, who chaired the Trustees Committee and has served on the board for 14 years. Thank you all, gentlemen. Graduates, now more than ever, our world needs the skills and talents you have learned and the character you have developed here at North Cross. I'm not referring to your pure academic skills. I know these are well honed and will serve you, your families, and your future employers well. I'm talking about your reasoning, communication, and leadership skills. Your ability to listen to two different points of view and bridge the gap between them. In this digital age, we need more strong thinkers who understand that many difficult decisions are not binary and who understand constructive compromise. We need more leaders who are willing to serve. North Cross has taught you how to do these things. As you head to college and beyond, use the skills to their fullest and give something back. And now I turn the podium over to Dr. Proctor. Good morning again. This is my 18th set of graduation remarks. Uh, actually, I wrote that on the airplane. This is actually my 19th, if you count the remarks made in Shanghai last Sunday. And even though each class is unique in personality, the same dilemma comes up year after year. Do I structure my remarks about the personality of the class, peppering those remarks in with a few funny comments, um, risk the, 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 the damage of saying the wrong thing or, or, or saying something that's not really funny? Or do I take a safer route and try to offer some sage advice to the graduates as they head off to college, knowing this is a difficult time to give these guys advice? This year was no different until I saw a great quote in Delta Sky Magazine. Um, the quote is, creativity is a wild mind and a disciplined eye. It was one of those uh, posters you can buy for you know, making you feel good about yourself. <laughs> I immediately thought that this would make the bones of a good cross ties article, or in this case, uh, graduation remarks, so I wrote it down. Subsequent research found that this quote can be attributed to no fewer than four different people, um, but I'm going to attribute it to Dorothy Parker, a 20th century satirist, poet, and an Academy Award nominated screenwriter. So think about this. Creativity is a wild mind and a disciplined eye. The reason this quote struck me was that it defined creativity using the juxtaposition of the words wild and disciplined. But more importantly, it uses the conjunction and to state that creativity must have both wildness and discipline concurrently. One without the other is not creativity. It's either craziness or predictable limitation. So take a second now and think about the most creative people in our lifetime. How many of you thought in that split second of Stephen Jobs? Perhaps this is an obvious selection given that we've had two movies and any number of biographies that have come out since his death. But Steve Jobs had a brilliant, brilliantly wild mind and the discipline to change the way we go about our lives. He was an adopted child, a college dropout, and a Zen Buddhist. Jobs loved Shakespeare and Dylan Thomas and Melville. But he also loved the discipline of engineering and design. 
The results are beautifully engineered products that have re-envisioned how we interact with the internet, how we listen to music, or how we watch movies. His wild mind allowed him to envision new ways to do things, and his disciplined eye made those visions a reality. Just to check here, did anybody immediately think of Matt Stone? I didn't think so. Does anyone know who Matt Stone is? Bennett? No? No? no. At the age of 21, Matt Stone and two of his friends wrote and filmed a wildly crazy three-minute short movie titled Alfred Packer, The Musical. It just so happens that Alfred Packer was a member of the Donner Party that was stranded in Loveland Pass and resorted to cannibalism to survive. Perfect subject for a musical, right? What was different from other student shorts at the University of Colorado was that Matt Stone raised $125,000 to make the short into a full-length musical movie and wound up selling that movie to a distributor for a million dollars. Matt now has five Emmy Awards as the co-creator of South Park and won three Tonys and a Grammy for writing the Broadway musical Book of Mormon. Matt Stone not only had a wild mind to produce some of the most funny and irreverent comedy ever, but he also had the discipline to generate initial investment capital, market his product, and solicit potential buyers. One of the best explorations of creativity can be found in Daniel Pink's book, A Whole New Mind. It's nearly 10 years old now and only available in paperback, but it still makes a great graduation gift. In fact, this is the book I gave Daniel Hobby last Wednesday for the Headmaster's Book Prize. In this book, Pink tells the story of shopping for coffee makers at Target, only to find there were 11 different types of coffee makers to choose from. Each was well made, each was well engineered, each was capable of producing a good cup of coffee. In other words, they were built by the disciplined eye of engineers. In order to compete in such a marketplace, discipline demanded that the manufacturers distinguish themselves by being the, less, the least expensive. To do this, they reduced costs by offshoring the manufacturing to a country with low wages. This would believe you to think that the best-selling coffee maker at Target would be one of the least expensive. But surprise, surprise. Pink found that the best-selling coffee maker at Target was the most expensive coffee maker they sold. It was made in Northern Europe at high-wage factories. And it makes the same cup of coffee as the other coffee makers make. So why then do people choose to spend more money? It's because the wild minds at the Braun Corporation realize that because a coffee maker often sits in plain view on a kitchen counter, people might be willing to spend more money to buy a coffee maker that looks good. Design would differentiate their product, assuming the discipline of engineering ensured it worked well. At North Cross School, I believe we've done a remarkable job of providing you a disciplined eye. You understand the requirement of hard work, careful preparation, and thoughtful action. Your success in these areas has gotten you into some of the best colleges in America. And we've even given you a smattering of the wild mind. King Henry, Aida, the creative arts, travel to all corners of the world, classmates from all corners of the world, visiting speakers from many disciplines and perspectives, great literature, and conversations with a bright and active faculty were all parts of developing your wild mind. But maybe with the single exception of Albert Newberry's jazz abilities, we've not equipped you nearly as well in the area of wild mind as we have disciplined eye. And it's fair to argue that Albert's jazz abilities are not the product of North Cross School, but we will claim them all the same and enjoy them forever. But all this is okay. It's okay because you're not finished products. We're sending you off to college and graduate school and interesting places of employment. 
Your disciplined eye will ensure you a comfortable and successful life. What I wish for you is for you to allow your wild mind to develop so that you can recognize and participate in the next great things to shape our world. Your future lies in a world with jobs that have not been invented. Working with people half a world away and will require you to go beyond good engineering. To be successful, you will need to be the creative force in the room. I trust in your disciplined eye. I look forward to watching your wild mind hard at work. Best of luck, class of 17, in all your endeavors. Thank you. Yesterday, graduation practice, I told the students that there are no mistakes at graduation. As long as, you're, as long as your intentions are pure at heart, you're okay. And uh, we forgot the um, presentation for, for our speaker today, so now I have it. Of course, he is a man that does, need, does not need an introduction. Um, our speaker today, our commencement address, or our, uh, commencement address is by Dr. Charles Steger. Now, he's the present emeritus at Virginia Tech University. Dr. Steger has served Virginia Tech at nearly every level possible. He was a Virginia Tech student, an instructor where he won two Teaching Excellence Awards and co-authored a textbook now in its seventh edition. He was an academic department head, college dean, the youngest dean of any college of architecture in the United States. He was vice president and finally president. Dr. Steger's previous position as Vice President for Development and University Relations, he served as director of a six-year campaign which exceeded its $250 million goal, raising $337 million with over 71,000 donors. I'm very pleased that Dr. Steger has come here to join us this morning. We have four future Hokies amongst our graduating class, and we have a few, uh, past Hokie bird in our faculty. So we have a long-standing tradition uh, with, with Virginia Tech. So I now introduce to you Dr. Steger. Well, thank you very much. I want to extend my appreciation to the board and to the administration of North Cross for giving me the opportunity to speak today and also to say how much I appreciate the opportunity uh, to share with the family and friends and the students of the class of 2017 for their accomplishments. You know, it's a wonderful opportunity to be with students, particularly on a bright day like today. I, uh, even though I'm retired from being president, I still participate and I do a little bit of teaching. At Tech, we have this thing called the Freshman Book Project where we choose one book and every freshman, freshman gets a copy it gives them something, they all read it, we all have seminars, it gives us something to talk about when they first come to campus. And uh, I was doing a symposium with a group of students related to the Freshman Book Project, which was, the book we had chosen was called Einstein's Dreams. And each chapter of the book dealt with one concept of time. And the chapter I was discussing that particular day said, what would you do if you had only one hour of your life to live? Pretty profound question. And finally, uh, one young lady raises her hand and she said, uh, if I had just one hour left to live, I'd like to spend it in your class in urban systems dynamics. And I'm thinking, that was a real class, by the way, even though it sounds, and I said, well, that's wonderful, but why on earth would you want to do that? And she said, because I've heard that each moment in your class is an eternity. <laughs> so I hope I won't have that impact on you today. <laughs> uh, and I won't, I won't go on and on, but I, I do want to offer a few thoughts about leadership and some of the characteristics uh, that it embodies because we have the future leaders of this country and countries around the world before us here today. And I have great confidence that they'll do a wonderful job. 
One definition of leadership is that it's the ability to influence and lead and guide others to accomplish a mission in the desired manner by providing purpose, direction, and motivation. Of course, in your chosen profession, you have to master the skill, the expertise, or the discipline that will underpin your leadership capacity. But leadership is not a mysterious phenomenon only available to a selected few. To an extent, it's a combination of skills and behaviors which can be learned. One aspect I've thought about a lot recently is what's called leading from where you stand. You don't have to be elected to high office to be named president of a major corporation to exercise leadership. You can do it from where you are today. And the more you do it, the better you get at it, and the more impact that you can have. And the time to start leading from where you stand is right today. You can all make a difference in what you do in the lives of other people. As I mentioned, leadership, to a large extent, is a combination of skills and behaviors that can be learned. And these attributes have been studied for years. There are lots of books out on the subject. But in my mind, and I say this from some limited experience, one of the most, if not, not the most important, is integrity and trust. <clears throat> Dwight Eisenhower, who commanded millions of troops in World War II and was then president for two terms, once said, the supreme quality for leadership is unquestionably integrity. Without it, no real success is possible no matter whether it is on a section gang, a football field, in an army, or in an office. And you'll find many such leaders in business and organizations, both small and large. And although generally we only hear about those whose moral compass has gone astray, and unfortunately we hear about too many of these, let me briefly mention just a few other traits that I believe you'll find in most great leaders. First is a sense of self-awareness. One of the greatest challenges is that of knowing yourself. What are you to be? Your self-concept, your values, your ethical makeup, who you are has to come from within you. Self-awareness is where leadership begins, but to lead others, you have to successfully lead yourself. And don't pretend to yourself or anyone else that you know everything. Indeed, something worthwhile can be learned from every encounter and every situation. Another trait is selflessness. True leaders gather the most leaders around them, not necessarily the most followers. They also give back to their employees and companies and organizations and their communities. And they create opportunities for others to grow and to thrive. Another trait that I would like to mention is courage. Leaders must be prepared to take on responsibility, to face challenges, to go against the tide, or to speak the truth in a constructive way, even when it's not popular. To make decisions under stress and with incomplete information, and to pursue their goals relentlessly. And they must do what they believe is right at the end of the day. With all that said, a leader must also listen to and consider differing viewpoints and have the courage to alter his or her own position when it's warranted, when it's the right thing to do. Dr. Martin Luther King said, the ultimate measure of a person is not where he or she stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where you stand at times of challenge and controversy. And another trait that is exceedingly important is that of humility. Great leaders recognize that it takes the work of many others to turn a vision into successful reality. They don't just give lip service, but they truly appreciate and give credit to each person for his or her own contribution. Another that's often overlooked is that of very hard work. Thomas Edison said nearly a century ago that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. He also noted 
opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in coveralls and looks a lot like work on occasion. Seriously, a good leader never expects the employees to work harder than he or she is willing to do, and a good leader must set the example. There are other traits that you will find in the best leaders out of commitment, of persistence, of confidence, not overconfidence, but confidence. A willingness to take calculated risk, to risk failure, and to give others who've proven themselves the latitude to do so. And there are a few more that come to mind. I'm sure that you have learned and will learn more about these, but I just want to tell you that sitting before us here today are the leaders of tomorrow, the class of 2017. I have great confidence in the future and that the fact that the young people who will go on to lead this country and other countries around the world will be exceedingly successful because I know they embody these characteristics that will make them successful and ethical leaders in the future. So I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today and to be part of this great celebration. Congratulations, class of 2017. Thank you, Dr. Seeger. And, and uh, it's not unnoticed that uh, your leadership made Virginia Tech one of the top research universities in the United States. And uh, with that, Roanoke has benefited greatly, so thank you again. We do have some um, awards to give out um, before we get down to the diplomas. And uh, this first award that I'm going to uh, present today is a uh, it's a special award. It's the Tom Slack Award, the Thomas A. Slack Award. Um, for at least another couple of years, we're sitting next to old Slack Hall, and uh, right next to uh, new Slack Hall, which will then become just Slack Hall. <laughs> Named after Tom Slack, who was one of the drivers that moved the campus to this location and created the, the essentially North Cross School that we know today. The Thomas A. Slack Award is presented to the student in the senior class who has rendered highest service to North Cross School through leadership based on the influence of character. I'm not going to hold you in suspense, but um, this year's Thomas Slack Award winner is Shada Campbell. stand up here in front of everybody while I say good things about her, but I do feel compelled to say some, some things about Shada. I, I've got a, a laundry list of things I could, I could go to, but um, these are just some of the highlights of, of what Shada has done for North Cross. Again, service, um, our leadership based on the influence of character. Um, Shada is the vice president of our senior class, and uh, this year was instrumental in all things SCA whether there were pep rallies or pancake breakfasts, uh, dances. Um, the expanding waistline of our faculty is testimony to her Bojangles days that she orders with free biscuit or biscuits that she sells from Bojangles. Um, athletically, she's a vital member of our field hockey and soccer team. Um, it was a great thing this year when our, our varsity girls basketball team was, was shorts and bodies and, and so um, Shada knew that she was tall and strong and built like a basketball player, so <laughs> she volunteered to to play basketball to give our, our starters a breather. She's a natural born scientist, um, very good natured, willing to help anyone, including the teacher. She's described by everybody as being kind. Academically, she's challenged herself in every way she could. She's won awards, she won our spirit award. She won our Mathematics Award. She's a member of the Cum Laude Society. She's traveled. She traveled to Greece and Italy last summer. And the chaperones said it was like having an additional chaperone on the trip because she was so responsible and helpful to others. She ran lights as part of the tech crew for two years for our winter theater. Always calm and professional, even when there were technical issues. And we do have the odd technical issue occasionally in Fishburne. What sets her apart, describing the words of one teacher, is she's an encourager. 
She gets others involved and she supports everyone in all their endeavors. Another teacher said she's a really good listener and she makes people feel like they can talk to her. She's an independent learner and task oriented. If given a task, she'll run with it and list others and get the job done. In short, she embodies the very core of what North Cross stands for. She's a great scholar, she's a great character, and she's an outstanding member of our community. So I'd like to award the 2017 Tom Slack Award to Shada Campbell. second award that I'm going to give right now and then we're going to have a, an address from our Global Studies Scholar. But the second award uh, is uh, for Margaret Lawrence, our salutatory. Where's Margaret? Margaret Lawrence, our salutatory. For the salutatory, we give uh, an award called the North Cross Cup and is presented to the student with the second highest grade point average in her graduating class. <clears throat> Margaret Lawrence joined North Cross School in junior kindergarten. She's been described by her teachers as kind and sensitive to her classmates and always willing to help them. That was by a JK teacher and she's lived up to that for 14 years. She's been a scholarly role model in and a committed and determined student. Over her 14 years at North Cross School, Margaret has demonstrated an eagerness to learn and grow, an ability to work independently, and to challenge herself on a daily basis to achieve her best. This includes in the classroom, on stage, and on the fields as well. Margaret is a hardworking and determined student, an AP scholar with distinction, consistently challenging herself to be the best student possible, her love of learning was evident on a daily basis. She was this year's winner of our History and French Awards as well as being a Global Studies Scholar. Margaret is a voracious reader, and this is deep reading, including the classics in the American and World Lit. And I'm sure she's ecstatic to learn that there are more than a million books in Swim Library as she heads off to William and Mary. So our salutatorian, Margaret Lawrence. Now I'd like to ask uh, Ainsley Reverco uh, to come forward. Ainsley is class of 2005. She would be Ainsley Cooper Reverco for some of you remember that. And to come forward and to um, present our uh, Distinguished Alumni Award. Good morning. I'm Ainsley Reverkom, class of 2005, and I'm proud to be here today to present the 2017 Alumni Service Award. It's fitting that the Alumni Service Award is presented at commencement, the day that the North Cross Alumni Association proudly welcomes 44 new members. Class of 2017, as you venture out and do wonderful things in your lives, I encourage you to always be mindful of your role within the North Cross community. The award I'm presenting today represents the impact that we as alumni can have on the school when we remain active, engaged, and supportive of the North Cross mission. So much of what goes on around campus is driven by volunteers and committed individuals who offer their time and resources to make North Cross the best it can be. This year's Alumni Award recipient is truly a leader in those efforts. Ian McDay graduated from North Cross in 1991 and has served the school in many ways since then. Initially, he became involved with the Alumni Association Board. He led the board as president and helped it become more active and engaged. After serving on the Alumni Association Board, he transitioned to the Board of Trustees. As a trustee, Ian served as the Audit, Compliance, and Policy Committee Chair. He also was a member of Academic Affairs and Strategic Oversight Committee. 
In these roles, he worked to implement stronger safety and governance policies, and he led a subcommittee to evaluate our STEM offerings. Aside from being an alumnus and board member, Ian is also a North Cross parent. He and his wife, Victoria, have two children here, excuse me, three children here, Wynn, Scout, and Teddy. The McDade family actively participates in school activities and community functions. When asked about his favorite traditions and memories from North Cross, Ian mentioned the friendships he enjoys many years after beginning school here and dusting off his cleats for the alumni soccer game. Maybe some of you will get to play with Ian in next year's alumni soccer game, but my hope is that decades from now, you also will cherish the lasting friendships that you developed within these halls. Now, it is my pleasure to welcome Ian McDay to the podium to receive the 2017 Alumni Service Award. Ian, thank you for your commitment to North Cross School and for being a vibrant member of our alumni community. years ago. Uh, so I remember what it was like and I promise I will not make this too long. I was reviewing my speech this morning on my iPad and I noticed that I had mistakenly labeled my speech notes for senior speech. <laughs> Something's going on there that I've got to figure out. I'm not sure what it is. So I'd first like to thank uh, Lee Huff, the entire alumni board, uh, for bestowing upon me this tremendous award. I recognize how fortunate I am to join the past recipients of this award. I also want to thank my family. Victoria and I try and instill in our three children the importance of giving back and serving the community, but that wouldn't be possible without the sacrifice of my family. Every hour spent on an endeavor like this, serving an institution like North Cross, is an hour not spent with one's family. So I'd just like to, to thank my family for all that they have done. I'd also like to thank my fellow board members uh, for all of the time and sacrifice that they have made. And I'd also like to really recognize my partners on the Audit Compliance and Co Policy Committee, which is without doubt the most exciting committee uh, to serve on. And if you ever have the opportunity, you'll, you'll want to do that. It's just <laughs> scintillating stuff. And finally, I'd like to recognize the contribution of staff members like Chris Proctor and Karen List. Uh, and so many others who have done a remarkable job uh, in improving the school. No school is perfect, and we're not done improving, but we have come a long way, and we are certainly moving in the right direction. Uh, and that's not possible without the contributions of, of everyone here, particularly the folks over here. So thank you. The last few weeks have felt like a graduation for me as well. As some of you know, after 10 years in front of my wife is laughing right now. <laughs> After 10 years in Roanoke and many canceled flights, um, we're moving to Charlotte. And I couldn't think of a better way to go out than to receive this award. I was driving across Michigan in the rain when Lee Huff called me to let me know that I would receive this award. And I had a couple of hours of driving ahead of me and my mind wandered back to memories from the past from long ago. I thought of 1978 when my family moved to Roanoke and we enrolled in North Cross, playing on the lower school playground. For some reason, I still remember my Nike sneakers from that, day, from that year. The friendships from my years at North Cross over the years that are still so important to me and the teachers and coaches who pushed me to be more than I thought I could be. My own graduation 26 years ago, sitting in those seats, waiting for this speaker to leave the stage. <laughs> and the wonderful years our children have had at North Cross. You know, you learn a lot about people in institutions like North Cross when you leave. The friends, the places, the things that are important to you really come into focus. 
and you appreciate more than you otherwise would have what is truly special and valuable to you. North Cross is a special place, but institutions like North Cross are only special because the people behind them are special. I'd like to provide two examples of how special this place is and how special the people are. Many people at North Cross contributed to our transition to Charlotte, but I'd like to highlight the efforts of two people, Ed Dickinson and Jennifer Lucky. Ed was my coach when I was here, as well as our daughter, Wynn's coach. And he can still lap me on the greenway, and when he does, he says encouraging words. Um, I don't know if he's mocking me or encouraging me, but I, I choose encouraging. Uh, he was an inspirational coach to, to both of us, nevertheless. Um, and I credit him for the wonderful, wonderful sixth grade year that, that Wynn had. We did not ask Ed to write a letter of recommendation to the school where Wynn will be attending, but we should have. He wrote a wonderful letter of recommendation for Wynn that the admissions team specifically mentioned when she was accepted to her first choice. And I cannot say enough about the lengths Miss Lucky went to to help our youngest son, Teddy. Teddy is four and isn't here and won't remember this, but he did not exactly ace his interviews when he applied to schools in Charlotte. However, he was given a second chance and Miss Lucky took the project on as if he was her own child. You would have thought he was applying for the Apollo space program. <laughs> he had to write his name, draw different shapes, cut in a circle and more. It doesn't sound like much, but when you're four years old and you have to learn how to cut in a circle, that's kind of difficult. But Miss Lucky was deadly serious about his second interview, probably more than his parents. And with considerable help from Miss Lucky, Teddy will be going to school with his sisters this fall. And no one was more pleased to hear that news than Miss Lucky. That's what makes North Cross so special. Ed Dickinson, Jennifer Lucky, didn't have to go that extra mile, particularly for a family that is leaving the school. But they did. And that says a lot about them, and it also says a lot about North Cross. So North Cross is indeed a special place. I'll conclude and turn the focus back to the class of 2017 by simply saying, I have gotten more out of this experience than the school has gotten from me. It's been challenging at times. I'm sure Chris never thought he would spend this much time with an audit chair. <laughs> but it has been well worth the effort. Thank you to all those involved with the school for all that you do, taking good, such good care of our children and this honor. It's been a privilege to serve North Cross. It's in good hands. And I wish all members of the community the best in the years to come. He mentions the audit committee, so I have to mention the audit committee. Uh, it's almost like a bi-monthly seminar in school governance for me. Um, we talk about things and we game plan for things that just remind me of the complexity of a school on a regular basis and, and it truly has been a learning experience uh, for me in many ways sitting in that, in that committee with, with so many smart people. Um, and, and Ian, I'll, I'll promise you a couple things. Um, one is I promise you that we will continue your unwavering drive for excellence at North Cross. And, uh, on the other hand, you take care of Scout. She has a wild mind. <laughs> about uh, six years ago, we started the, the conversation about what we could do in our upper school curriculum to, to create something that was new, that was unique, that was important for our students to recognize going forward into, a, at that time, the 21st century, which we were already 11 years into, a tenth of the way through the century. And we decided to create um, a global studies program, uh, which is now um, the Horse Chief Raylan Program for Global Studies. And each year, we've had a tremendous number of students that receive a second 
uh, honor as, at graduation a, a Global Studies Certificate. And each year we've had a, a member of the senior class who's receiving one of the certificates speak to us about the concept of the Global Studies Program and, uh, and, and where we're headed with it. So this year um, our selected speaker for Global Studies is Rebecca Benson. Good morning. My name is Rebecca Benson, and I have been a part of the Global Studies program since my freshman year. First, I would like to thank all the faculty and staff for everything they've done to make this program possible. Thank you for organizing the international trips and seminars here at North Cross. I would especially like to thank Dr. Jessen, Mr. Lamas, and Mr. Robillard, who have served as directors of the Global Studies program at various times. Going into the Global Studies program, I didn't really know what to expect. I was told that we would have to take certain classes that discussed global issues and go to seminars that involved international events and cultures. We would also have to travel internationally for a minimum of two weeks. I didn't realize how much I would learn in this program and how much it would affect my view of the world. The first time I felt that I was learning a significant amount about other cultures was during my trip to Barcelona, Spain, Nice, France, Lake Como, Italy, and Davos, Switzerland. The experience was eye-opening for me. For the first time in my life, I was in a country where I did not know the language. I had always heard about people coming to America without knowing English. However, after that trip, I could understand how difficult it would be to come to a country where you do not know the language. I specifically remember a certain time when we went to a grocery store in Barcelona. After buying my items, I remember trying to hold multiple things in my hands. I felt completely helpless because I had no idea how to ask the cashier for a bag to put my things in. In that moment, I really wished that I had known Spanish. This experience made me realize the importance of knowing a second language. I had come to Spain to learn about the Spanish culture and see the beautiful things Barcelona had to offer. However, I also realized that an important part of being able to embrace a culture is being able to speak to the locals in their native language. The Global Studies scholars graduating today have had the opportunity to travel to various countries around the world, including Spain, Italy, Greece, and China. We have had the opportunity to learn about different cultures from our fellow classmates who have come to North Cross from different countries. We have been introduced to new parts of the world through books and guest speakers. Some of my classmates and I have traveled to Boston to participate in the Harvard Model United Nations. There, we participated in discussions about world issues and created resolutions to solve these problems. Some of us traveled to Davos, Switzerland and participated in a leadership summit where we came up with ideas for improving our education system. Events like these have taught us how to be leaders in our communities while considering what is going on in the rest of the world. Today, people often talk about globalization. The world is becoming more connected because of the new technology at our fingertips. With this technology, people can get in touch with somebody on the other side of the world in an instant. With this ability to easily connect with people from other countries comes the responsibility to effectively interact with them. In order to do this, we must understand other nations, languages, customs, and histories. Not only is the Global Studies program introducing students to other cultures, but it is also teaching them the importance of knowing about these cultures. Once a person knows more about the events, cultures, and languages throughout the world, they have many more opportunities available to them. Through learning about different cultures, we can create bonds with people from different countries. The Global Studies program teaches us to be more open-minded when considering world issues or talking to people about different cultures. This program teaches us to view the world in a way we may not have before. Now that we've completed the Global Studies program, I hope that we are all able to take what we have learned in this program and apply it to our lives outside of North Cross. Thank you. Our last award this morning 
is our valedictorian. And for our valedictorian, they receive the North Cross Medal, uh, which is actually a very large, beautiful bowl of uh, metal. And uh, our valedictorian this year is Ashton Gerhardt. Like our salutatorian, Ashton joined us in junior kindergarten. It goes without saying, but Ashton has been described by her teachers over the years as hardworking, talented, bright, diligent, responsible, and very capable. You don't get where she is without having all that. But she's also a remarkably reflective young woman, aware of the subtleties of all that goes on around her. She's a Global Studies Scholar, which is an honor in its own right, but in ninth grade she wrote a remarkable essay on global citizenship that really captured the essence of our program, as well as demonstrating Ashton's authentic desire to learn more about the world. I know this because I've used quotes from this essay several times over the years. A teacher this year commented, Ashton's always thoroughly prepared and engaged in class vigorously taking notes or offering up questions and suggestions in discussions. Her transcript is complete with numerous A pluses as well as seven AP classes. And last year she received the AP Scholar with Honor designation for the success she had on her AP examinations. I'm always most impressed by Ashton's quiet sense of self-confidence. She works at the highest level to get flies under the radar. She constantly seeks, yet she knows where she wants to go. There is an efficiency in everything that she does. And in her, and in her own style, she will take her talents to High Point University next year. Congratulations to our valedictorian, Ashton Gerhardt. I would like to thank a number of people. First, my parents for allowing me to attend North Cross, who I have blossomed into the person I am, and for supporting me through all my endeavors, even if I am sometimes grumpy from studying or writing so long. Thank you for putting up with me, even when I was difficult. I would also like to thank my teachers, as well as the teachers that never personally taught me. When I was younger, I took my teachers for granted, but it is not until today that I realize that our teachers are instrumental in shaping our character, as well as educating us. Without them, we would not learn how to act in a play or musical, learn how to play our favorite sports, learn how to sing or play instruments, or even learn how to write. Lastly, thank you to the class of 2017 for endless memories, giving me many new friends and a great year together, or many years together in some cases. I would like to congratulate everyone on this stage. I know that our class finished with many different grades and accomplishments, but nevertheless, we all did it. We have been counting down the days for many months, and today, we are finally going to graduate. We are going to very different schools in very different places, from Queensland, Australia, to Boston, Massachusetts, or even staying in the area. No matter where we are going after, we are all going to leave high school today, and must keep the lessons we have learned from North Cross with us in our future endeavors. And we would not be graduating today without North Cross. As Dr. Proctor said, I have been going to North Cross for as long as I possibly could, starting in junior kindergarten, so I have no outside perspective. However, I know I speak for everyone when I say North Cross has taught me and the rest of my class a plethora of lessons which will stay with us for the rest of our lives. And these lessons are important to remember today, as soon we will be setting off on our own paths. First, North Cross has provided not just me, but every one of its students with a second family, a family like no other. This school means so much to so many people, especially those of us who are going to leave it today. During my years at North Cross, our family has faced various tragedies, which I am sure many of you are aware of. However, we did not abandon our brothers or sisters through these tragedies. We stuck together through the pain that it sometimes seems like it would never end. We stuck together simply because we are a family. Not because some people thought they had to, but because they knew they were supporting their family. 
I've been a part of this family for 14 years. Therefore, I've watched many people leave and enter this new family. I can safely say, however, that even if I had not spent so much time at the school, I would still feel, and I hope that all people feel, as if they belong to a new family beginning with their first day and continuing through the rest of their life. North Cross has also taught me the importance of accepting differences, especially in a world that sometimes seems like it is only full of hatred. Our class has athletes, thespians, musicians, and intellectuals, and that is what makes us unique. Our composition is different from every class before us and every class after us. Our class has some people from almost 8,000 miles away, while some, such as myself, only live a few miles away. There will never be another Shimani Jackson or Jack Colley, Lucas Arnold, Margaret Lawrence, Natalie List, or Albert Newberry. North Class has enabled us all to be ourselves and to be comfortable with who we are, as well as the decisions we make. As we all know, life would be boring if we were all the same. After being named valedictorian, I was nervous, not because of the speech, which I was a little nervous for, but because I was not going to the University of Virginia, where the previous valedictorians have a history of going. Instead, I chose High Point University, which may not be as prestigious as some of the other schools, but is where I am happy and believe that I can succeed. Thus, North Cross has fostered a sense of independence within each one of us and taught us to follow our own goals, not someone else's. This is important to remember today, as we will likely be faced with difficult decisions in the future, which will determine our path in life. Your future, whether your failures or accomplishments, is up to you. So make the most of life, so hopefully, when you reminisce, you can say that you made the right decisions, regardless of what others have to say. I would also like to emphasize that everyone is more than a test score, more than a grade. Therefore, do not let these things deter you from your goals. Each and every one of us is capable of great things, regardless of our grades or the colleges we are going to. Life will be what we make of it, so make the best of it. This next subject may be a strange topic to mention as valedictorian, but North Cross has also taught me that failure is okay sometimes. Specifically, Mr. Valderas and my AP Calculus class. Of course, I'm not telling anyone to simply give up on school and resort to failure. No, I am saying that at some point in your life, you will come across something that you cannot accomplish or is more difficult than you're used to. However, you cannot give up. If you ask anyone that knows me, they will say that I do not enjoy math. And I will point to the fact that in the fifth grade, I got a B in math. Of course, I blame my brother because I was busy going to all his baseball games. <laughs> Regardless, never in a million years did I think I would take an AP math class, let alone calculus. In fact, I was trying to get out of the class in the beginning of the year. But I decided to take the class, which was okay, until I failed the second test. I convinced myself I was going to drop the class. For weeks, I tried to muster the courage to talk to Mr. Valderas, but I never did, and I stayed in the class. I decided dropping the class would be giving up and resorting to something easier when I had not been challenged previously. Although I may have learned a little math, AP Calculus taught me an even bigger lesson. To sometimes accept failure, but don't give up. Simply try harder or acknowledge that your best is simply the best that you can do. I would like to tell a quick story before closing. Near the beginning of school, we were asked to bring in objects that represented North Cross. This was a simple assignment, and people brought in many different things. But one person, Caroline McGinty, brought in a Rubik's Cube. The more I reflect upon North Cross, the more similarities I see between this simple toy and our institution. The cube and school are not uniform. There are different colors to show the different people. Also, the cube is inseparable, much like our family. Although our family may experience rough times, we will always be bound to one another. Sometimes you turn the cube over and over again, but you can't solve it. This represents the struggles or burdens we have dealt with during our years and may continue to face. However, even though the puzzle cannot be solved, it stays together. Lastly, it represents that things may, conf may be confusing and it may seem like problems will never be solved, but in the end, things will be okay. Things will align and we will find our paths. But we must remember the lessons North Cross has taught us as the school has prepared us for the future. For this reason, I'm going to give each of my classmates a miniature Rubik's cubes, Cube in hope that they will remember the lessons they have learned as well as our classmates. And you can get them when we process out. I would like to conclude with some words from my classmates to remind them of the words they use to describe North Cross so they never forget. Community, family, 
personal place of growth together. While we will go to different schools on different paths, we should never forget each other or the memories we cultivated during our many years. We will be starting college next year, or in the case of Justin Wright, going to the Marines, but we will all be going to a new place. As many people are aware, new places can be daunting, especially for people like me who have gone to school with the same people for most of their lives. However, we will succeed if we remember the lessons North Cross taught us. North Cross has provided us with the fundamentals necessary to succeed, but it is up to each and every one of us to use the lessons North Cross has taught us. Join a new family wherever you go, but never forget your old family here at school. Embrace your uniqueness in a world where no one else is exactly like you, just as you've done at North Cross. Lastly, I would like for my classmates to hear one quotation before concluding. Winston Churchill once said, quote, now this is not the end, it is not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning, end quote. We still have our whole lives ahead of us, and from the bottom of my heart, I wish everyone luck in the future, and always remember, you have a family in each and every one of us here at North Cross. Thank you. Well, so now is time to take another step towards that end of the beginning. Um, and actually, it, she didn't complete the story about the calculus class. She got an A in it, so I mean, that, <laughs> so it's a brief moment of failure, very brief. Um, well, class of 2017, I think it's about time to get down to business. All right, well, let's go ahead. If I could ask uh, Russ Ellett, uh, our board of, uh, uh, our, our, uh, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mark Thompson, our upper school director, to come up and help uh, award the diplomas. All right, the moment we've been waiting for, seniors. Lucas Smither Alera. Lucas McGregor Arnold. Sean Gavin Alwater. Yateng Bai. Rebecca Catherine Benson, Global Studies Scholar. <laughs> Davis Michael Call, Diploma, presented by his father, former Board of Trustees member, Mr. Doug Call. Shada Nicole Campbell. Luke Taylor Carter. Wong Hong Chen. Mary Claiborne Creasy. Inkpaleg Dendev. <laughs> Greg 
Bruce Michael Farrell II, Global Studies Scholar, Diploma, presented by his father, Board of Trustees member, Mr. William Farrell. Delaney Richmond Freeland. <laughs> Ashton Michelle Gerhardt, Global Studies Scholar. <laughs> Joshua Daniel Greenway. Arij Hader Hashman. <laughs> Peter Zachary Dobler, diploma presented by his mother, Board of Trustees member, Dr. Carolyn Dobler. Jack Robert Holly. Shivani Rolanda Jackson. <laughs> Jerrion Romella Jenkins Sanders, Saunders, excuse me, diploma presented by his stepfather, staff member, Mr. Alex Hash. Jeremiah. <laughs> Margaret Ruth Lawrence, Global Studies Scholar, diploma presented by her mother and father, faculty member Mrs. Wendy Lawrence, and Director of Athletics and Wellness, Mr. Eric Lawrence.
Charles Lawrence Lemon. Deming Lee. Natalie Jean List, Global Studies Scholar, diploma presented by her mother, <clears throat> Associate Head of School for Finance and Operations, Mrs. Karen List. <clears throat> Miles Thomas Lohman. Arthur Marvin. Caroline Grace McJimsey, Global Studies Scholar. Albert Michael Newberry. Chase Jameson Overton. Naima Kamran Rasul. Helen Kirk Schmedji, Global Studies Scholar. <laughs> David Thomas Semler, Jr., Diploma, presented by his mother, faculty member, Mrs. Mary Semler. Morgan Riley Sturm. <laughs> Jingyu Tao. Yasmin Gabriella Tijani. Christopher Howard Wadstrom. Haumeen Wong. William Harrison Wells. Blake Jackson Willis, diploma presented by his mother, Mrs. Sydney Willis.
Justin Douglas Wright, diploma presented by his mother, Board of Trustees member, Ms. Mary Lynn Wright. Gishan Yan. <laughs> Yang Yi. Jin Zhao. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present to you the North Cross School Class of 2017. save my remarks for the very end and that the reason would become apparent. Uh, we're not just uh, losing our graduates uh, this year, we're also losing a couple of faculty members this year and uh, unlike other years, um, these are some fairly senior faculty members and um, I thought it was important to let you know a little bit about them before we let them leave. Now I'm going to ask them to stand up. Our first one is Leanne Sigmund Farley. <laughs> Leanne was appointed in 1994, retiring this year. It's with great appreciation but much sadness that we bid farewell to one of our most loved middle school teachers. Leanne Sigmund Farley, who retires after 22 years of teaching at North Cross School. When fellow faculty members were asked to reflect on Ms. Farley's teaching, the words most often used included passion, energy, and heart. One student said, she teaches us without teaching. Her teaching colleague, Sandy Patterson, said, Leanne has the biggest heart imaginable. It has room to care about everyone she knows. For most people, this would be a heavy burden. However, for Leanne, it is a soft place for all to receive her nurturing concern and counsel. Her students might never know the lengths to which she goes to serve them, not only as a wonderful teacher, but also as a truly caring person. Leanne will never be replaced. She is one of a kind, and I cherish the time we shared at North Cross. In her English literature classes, her students attribute their love of The Hobbit to her teaching of it. When our upper school global studies students visited New Zealand and traveled to where the film version of the novel was created, it took photos to bring back to her, even though they had not had her as a teacher for several years. She leaves that kind of lasting impression. Middle school director Ed Dickinson put it this way, Ms. Farley has a rare ability to impact her passion for reading and writing on her students in a very lasting and meaningful way. She loves working with young people and her class is always alive with energy and ideas. Middle school math teacher Erin Jones said, above all else, she truly cares for her students. That is one of the biggest reasons so, so many of them remember her so fondly after they leave North Cross School. For me, I always thought Leanne was a bit crazy. <laughs> crazy like a fox. Let me leave you with these words, 
words all of our graduates have sat in Miss Farley's sixth grade English class probably still remember. And words I promise Miss Farley all of our sixth graders will always learn. Twas Brillig and the slithy toves did gyra and gimbal in the wave. All men, what's it? Geyer. Geyer. Did gyre and gimbal in the wave. All mimsy were the borgoves, and the moan wraths outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jujube bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. There you go, the jabberwock. Thank you, Leanne. And fittingly, we're saving the oldest for last, Richard Cook, appointed 1972, retiring in 2017. You know you're at the end of an era when the person who has been a teacher here for over four years, someone who started when our namesake, Billy Northcross Ellis, was here, is leaving the classroom. Zach Dover, class of 2017, said, this class is like sitting in front of a fire hydrant of knowledge and just taking it all down. Upper school English teacher Jennifer Sanders, also a student of Richard Cook, I believe, yes, also a student of Richard Cook's, said Richard Cook is an integral part of this school and we will miss the steadying influence of his humor and long experience. I can't imagine the North Cross without Richard. Beyond Richard's contributions in the classroom, he's often referred to as the father of soccer in Roanoke Valley. He was hired in 1972 by John Tucker, the second headmaster at North Cross. He was brought here not only to teach middle school history, but also to start a soccer program at North Cross. In Richard's words, in 1975, after a couple of cold but successful seasons at North Cross, remember soccer was a winter sport back then, I was approached by the Director of Parks and Recreation to start a program in Roanoke City. With the help of North Cross school parents like Pearl Perlman, Carl Bivens, Steve Bodley, and George Logan, we started a successful program in the city. A few years after that, I helped start the programs in Roanoke County with Gary Huff and another in Salem with Bruce Mann. In the classroom, his approach included humor and a sincere interest in his student's success inside and outside of the classroom. Anna Cooper, class of 14, commented, Mr. Cook's passion for teaching is obvious from the first day of class. He never fails to go the extra mile to help students, and he is always the first to congratulate students on their success, whether it's in the class, on stage, or on the athletic field. Senior Helen Smedgy said, Mr. Cook is awesome because he not only cares about history, but he cares about students' interests beyond the classroom. His colleagues, myself most definitely included, appreciate his guidance and support. Richard has served as a mentor and guide for me the past 12 years. I can always count on him. From making the coffee in the morning to being the voice of the faculty in the meeting, Richard is the rock of the faculty. It's been an honor and a pleasure to work with him for the past decade. Jennifer Landry, upper school science teacher. We will forever be indebted to Richard Cook for the legacy he has left on the North Cross community. Richard, you're not allowed to be a stranger. To ensure this, the Board of Trustees last month created the status of faculty emeritus, complete with benefits too numerous and glorious to mention at this meeting. <laughs> You, along with seven other former North Cross faculty members, all of whom have served for more than 30 years, will be granted the status and will be duly notified. You're really the first. Congratulations on your new, uh, newfound status as a retiree and as a faculty emeritus at North Cross School.
Will you please join me in the benediction? May life's many blessings follow you all every day of your lives. May you walk safely along the pathways you choose as you follow your dreams. May wisdom and a good heart guide the decisions you will make and the passions you will follow. May your lives always reflect truth, honor, love, and peace. May your life be a bright light for others to see, and may you carry that light into each new day, into each new place, into each new circumstance. And may the best days of your past pale in comparison to the days of your future. Amen. I'd like at this time to invite uh, families and graduates back to the headmaster's house uh, after the event. Uh, we have uh, some finger food, uh, lemonade, and a great place to take lots of good pictures of uh, your graduate and their friends. So please, you're uh, more than welcome. There will be buses uh, available for those of you who need assistance. Um, parking is a little uh, tricky, um, but just try to avoid the, the wetter spots on the field, and I think you'll be all right. So, it's also an easy walk uh, downhill most of the way. So thank you guys so much. And uh, with that, 